language and allow it recursivity and allow it to access the, the infinite, uh, the possibility of managing information in particular in completely different ways. You know, as we look at the communication between cells, between tissues, between bacteria, um, what, what, you know, what, what are some of the signs that you would, uh, that you would look for the way you would say, Hey, look, this looks like a simple language. Like what's the, what's the key? What, what, what distinguishes language from, I mean, communication is everywhere, but the, you know, language from communication. When you are moving, for example, in bacteria, and there's been the idea that they, they have some kind of a language um, has been kind of there by Ben Jacob and others that propose this kind of bacterial intelligence. I think it, it fits well into, into Shannon's communication channel, where you have um, communication, which means I send my signals, signals are correctly uh, interpreted as much as possible by, by the receiver, um, but that all remains there. Um, from there into something that you can call having a, a grammar, something that really implies that language is organized in a complex way that allows hierarchy and allows recursivity, the jump is enormous. And that's why I think that um, we can actually identify uh, precursors of language uh, at different levels. Now we have new tools for, for understanding or maybe even playing with the communication systems in, in Wales and, and our kind of uh, cousins there. Uh, we'll see how far this brings, because I think that it's going to be possible to actually know if they have a, a grammar structure. It's is this beautiful possibility that synthetic alternatives bring into understanding language. And now you have this new generation of language systems that maybe we can jump over and, and answer the big questions like, if a complex language emerges in artificial system, it's going to be like ours. It's going to have the same kind of fundamental, basic, formal structures, or can it be something totally different? Josh Barngard uh, and, uh, has, has got some, some amazing work in, on, on this, and we've, uh, we've been looking into this, this, um, this notion of polycomputing, this idea that the exact same set of physical events can be interpreted by different observers as different computations. And I wonder if that extends to uh, the observation of a grammar. I wonder if if different observers with different cognitive structures can look at the same stream, uh, the, the same physical stream, and one sees a grammar and one doesn't, or one sees one grammar and one sees a completely different grammar. Like I'm not sure if if it's overloaded that way, if it's possible to do that. But I but I, I wonder, right? I wonder if some of this is very much in the eye of the uh, eye of the observer, not not just to the you know, are we smart enough to detect it? But I mean, that's that's kind of clear. But 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 really, is it is it possible that that you see completely different things? Um, yeah, yeah. I'm a bit curious about that because I, I just recently kind of stumbled into into the concept of this idea that you guys suggest on polycomputation, and and again. Um, Thinking about all the kind of unexpected surprises that we have from, from the material nature of mm. meeting mm. systems and, <clears throat> and how the, the agency that this, that this brings unexpectedly um, can fill the gaps that apparently are there, um, opens the door also for language. I mean, uh, can communicate complex communication systems mm -hmm. emerge by exploiting all kinds of um, even agential materials, right? That that yep. can be can be there. We are we are all the time assuming that the neural network kind of metaphor is going to be the 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 only that probably carries out um, the complexity you need for that. Mm -hmm. But who knows? I mean, that's again um, an open an open field to be developed. We you know agency in really weird places, like for example, in the communication channel itself. You know, so you've got two agents that are communicating, but what if the what if the channel has a has an agenda too, right? And what happened? And and also the patterns themselves. I mean, that's the latest thing that I've been working on this 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 idea that 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 the patterns themselves within these cognitive systems may have tendencies to self persistence and to actually some niche construction. So so can you know do you are are there thoughts that kind of modify the cognitive agent so that he would have more thoughts of the same type and you know uh, do they have do they have certain kinds of these homeostatic or even allostatic uh, capacities you know as patterns within a you know within a system. But I think I think it's going to be very interesting in the next uh, next few decades.